There are sometimes sharks that you can never forget. This is Arrow. Back in January of this year, I found Arrow for the second time. The first time I found him was in August of 2020. I haven't seen it since. As you can see, this shark is suffering from a severely damaged pectoral fin. Likely, according to most scientists I've spoken with, this is a long-line fishing injury. Last month, in an article in the Bulletin of the Southern California Academy of Sciences, a peer-reviewed scientific journal, this footage was analyzed in an informative article covering not only the shark's micro-movements, but also its general well-being. I've included a link to the article above and in the description below. Whether I find Arrow again remains to be seen, but I am looking, and I do hope he's out there. In the meantime, I'm working with co-author Philip Stearns to find this injured shark. So joining me today is Phil Stearns. He's actually a scientist who's studying pectoral fins of great white sharks. And so Phil is here with me today. Uh, tell me a little bit about what you do. Uh, yeah, so I actually study shark biomechanics. So my interest is what's the relationship between the body form of a shark and how it swims. And I've been doing that for the last couple of years. So now what I'm specifically focusing on for my PhD is the evolution of shark pectoral fins and how it relates to their ecology and how they swim and how they just perform on a day-to-day -day basis. Because despite all of our recent research of sharks, we don't know that much about shark pectoral fins. So understanding the biomechanics and how important it is in shark movement, vertical, you know, just chasing prey, evading predators, and what role it plays in maneuverability, that's a great mystery that we have that I'm trying to solve. Well, the footage that I filmed back in January and in August of last year, I handed it over to Phil, and Phil actually uh, published an article, yes. a peer-reviewed article, mm -hmm. using that footage. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that article. Yeah, so uh, when I saw the footage of the shark, it blew my mind, because when you see a shark with a deformed pectoral fin, of the somewhat knowledge that we do have on shark pectoral fins, it seems to violate that. So it was just an extraordinary find, because in all my years of looking at sharks, I've never seen a shark with that kind of injury. So I looked at the pictures, I looked at the video, and I noticed that the sharks seemed to be swimming rather sluggishly, but it was still surviving because you've seen it twice over a five month period. So I'm wondering, what is the survivorship of the shark? How is it performing its day-to-day -day activities? Is it moving up and down the water column? How is it capturing its prey? Because with the loss of one pectoral fin, you would think that should greatly uh, affect the ability for the shark to perform lift, move up and down, side to side movement so seeing that kind of shark injured like that surviving over a five month period and hopefully we see it again today it'd just be absolutely fascinating and we're going to search for it now i've got the drone set up right behind us here we're all set to go to fly now this is the last location where i saw this shark back in january uh, i i don't know if we'll find it today i do know we will see some sharks so let's take off let's see what we find Our search for Arrow today started like most other searches I conduct. It didn't take long to find a white shark. As I film this shark, I get close to confirm. This one has two pectoral fins. It is not Arrow, unfortunately. However, watch closely and you'll notice this shark is not alone. There's actually a harbor seal zooming along in the safer shallow waters. You get the feeling this seal knows there's sharks nearby. And th this is actually kind of like a, it's a very shallow area. Really? Yeah, uh, there's five. Okay, five, wow. Five, there's another one there. Um, so five sharks, six, seven, ooh, that's a big one. Oh boy. Okay, so just see that one? You can see the size on that one. Oh, yeah. Thicker. See how yep. thick he is? Yep. And as we filmed here for a while longer, documenting human encounters and keeping a tally of how many sharks were in the area, we noticed another breach. 
I guarantee you, they start moving the sun starts going this yep. way, they're going to go that way. Oh, wow. Oh, what was that? A breach. That was a breach. Oh, my goodness. To the, oh, wow. Yeah, something just... That was a breeze. That was a breeze. 100%. Oh, wow. Holy crap. Did oh, we get my, that on camera? I don't know. If we I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I just saw, I caught the tail end oh, of it. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah, that was a breeze. Oh, holy crap. I'm going to have to check the video on that. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, dude. I saw it. That's what I thought. That was a breeze. Bill saw another breach right in front of him. The whole shark just jumped right out of the water, landed, giant splash. I didn't capture it on the drone, of course, because I'm always in the wrong place at the wrong time. But Bill got to see it. That's two breaches we've seen today. I'm about to show him uh, some footage that I got of him as he was walking in the in the water. I uh, wanted to get an idea of. Uh, whether or not he can actually see the shark when it comes close to shore, but uh, he, he couldn't see it at all. I'm about to show him this footage. Never saw it. Never saw it. I never saw anything. Oh, check this out. Oh my god. <laughs> I never saw him at all. No. No, couldn't see a single thing. That was unbelievable. Yeah, that, that's, look how close you are there. I mean, I thought about going a little further out too. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. It's incredible. You can't even see it from shore. It's it's amazing. And we're actually getting covered in a marine layer right now. So we're going to have to lower the drones. But I think we're going to uh, charge the batteries for a bit and wait for this marine layer to pass. There's a fin right there. Oh, yeah. Yep. Did yep. you see it? Yep. The That's black? Right. Yep. We're waiting for this marine layer to burn so we can get the drone back up. But... Uh, in the meantime, we're still talking sharks here. Uh, I'm going to show you guys some footage uh, that we shot just a little while ago before the marine layer came in. I'm curious in learning about what the white sharks basically do on a day-to-day -day basis and what we know about them. Because from what I observe, I know that the sharks tend to, on a local scale they tend to move from point a to point b to point c and i've got them kind of almost to the to the hour moving from these locations what what is it that we know about them well, and their movement so what you're talking about is one of the great mysteries again is fine scale movement so what does it do on a day-to-day -day basis why does it pick this spot on the shoreline and move up and down as you say on a day-to-day -day basis from point a to point b to point c is there some sort of you know, is it an aggregation for prey? Is there, is there always prey uh, readily available? So why would you leave the site? Because if the food's good here, why go out where you're going to possibly have a lower opportunity to capture prey? So is there prey here? And simply, are they just patrolling up and down the coast and seeing an opportunity? And then, hey, there's a ray here. There's another fish I can go after. And they're staying here because they know that the food source is here. The question is, why do they go long distance migrations at some points in their life? Why do they leave an area where the food's good? Is it for mating purposes? We're still trying to understand that. So the Pacific white shark population has been pretty well studied for you know, up in the north, off the Fairlawn Islands in San Francisco. We have good uh, migration tracks of those sharks, but down here in Southern California, there's still some mysteries um, that we're trying to understand. Obviously, uh, pupping grounds, because if we see juvenile white sharks, that means that there has to be uh, neonates being born somewhere. So is it down further in Mexico? Is it down here along the southern coast of California? And then are the white sharks just hanging out here the first couple years of their life to possibly evade larger sharks, killer whales? Is there just an ample food supply here? So the question going going back to the main question is what are they doing on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis? I think it's just it's a good spot for they're protected here. There's not a lot of bigger predators that come in. I think there's an ample food supply and they just hang out here for an aggregation site. As we ended the day, Phil and I counted 10 sharks, including two with other injuries. 
please see my previous videos regarding those sharks. And while we didn't see Arrow this time, it's well known that sharks are some of the most resilient animals on Earth. Our search for Arrow will continue. Do you think this shark is still alive? Let me know in the comments. As for me, I personally think I will find Arrow again someday. I greatly appreciate your support on this channel and I look forward to bringing you more shark information featuring shark experts and scientists. If you like this content, please like and subscribe.